There are several ways how you can send data to GA4, and measurement protocol is one of them. However, there are some nuances that you need to be aware of, and in this video, I will show them. Measurement protocol is a way for you, or actually for your developers, to send data from your system, for example, maybe the backend of your website or CRM, directly to Google Analytics 4. But there are some nuances and limitations that we are going to talk about in this video. To get started, go to the Google Analytics Event Builder. I will post a link to it in the description of this video. Once you click that link, you might be asked to log in. So log in with your Google account, and then you will see a form that looks like this. This is useful because basically it helps you to build a sample request to Google Analytics 4, and that request will be sent to a measurement protocol. And then also you can validate it. And in fact, you can even test that and see how the data looks in your Google Analytics 4 reports. So here you will see some of the fields that are required, some are optional, and also you can send some additional parameters. In this video, I will be showing an example related to website. That's why I will be switching to gtag.js. And here, first, we need to get the API secret. To do that, go to Google Analytics 4, then go to admin, and then in the property column, go to data streams. Select your website data stream, and then click measurement protocol API secrets. A good thing about GA4 measurement protocol compared to Universal Analytics is that you can create these secret keys. What does it mean is that if a request is sent to your property without that API secret key, the request will not be processed. This will prevent you from getting spam requests sent via measurement protocol. And in Universal Analytics, this was quite a big problem. So first, let's create a secret. Click Create right here, and then give it a nickname. Right here, I will enter Demo, but you can enter it, let's say, CRM, if you're planning to send data from there, or maybe some other name. This is up to you. This name is purely for internal use. Click Create. And then you will get this secret value. So copy it, and then paste it right here. The next step is to enter measurement ID. So we need to go back, and in the web stream settings, click copy to get this measurement ID and paste it right here. Now, the next step is client ID. As you can see, it is also required because we have this asterisk. And that's actually a limitation of GE4 measurement protocol compared to Universal Analytics. Because if you want to send some data with measurement protocol, your visitor must already have visited your site and it already must be tracked by Google Analytics. So GA4 measurement protocol is designed not to create new users, but actually just to enrich the data that was already tracked, let's say by GTAG or by Google Tag Manager, which is a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. So we have to accept that. Now to get the client ID, there are various options. But one of them is to read the cookie of the visitor that has already visited your site. So let me go to the demo site. Here I will click in Chrome on three dots, more tools, developer tools, then application, then cookies. And here I should enter underscore GA. Both of these cookies are important to us, but first let's start with the GA. Here we have these two numbers separated with a dot. So the first number and the second number. So this entire combination is the client ID. So you can copy it and paste it here. So basically, in general, what it means is that let's say that a visitor lands on your website and submits a form. So if you store that form submission data, or actually your developers, if they store that data somewhere in the database, they will also need to store the most recent client ID of that visitor, because that client ID will be later used to send data with measurement protocol. In this setup, we don't have user ID, so we will skip that, and then you can send an event. You can include the event name. It might be one of the recommended events. It might also be a custom event. Depending on what kind of event you select right here, you will get some suggested parameters here. So for example, if you want, you can switch to retail e-commerce, or maybe you want to send a custom event. So here you will see how these particular parameters change. Let's say that I want to send a purchase event. That's why I will switch to all apps. And here I will enter 
purchase. Here is the event name. And here we have a bunch of parameters. So here are purchase related parameters such as transaction ID, shipping, currency, and so on. And here are item related parameters, for example, item ID. And these fields are for the first item. If you want to add more item, you can click item right here, then it will have item two. If you want to remove some parameters, then I recommend that you switch to show advanced options right here, and then you will be able to remove them. So if you want to remove the entire item, you can click this button. If you want to remove certain parameters, you can click these icons right here. So let me say remove the first item, well actually the second item, and then here is the first item. Now, just for testing purposes, I will remove the affiliation. I don't need that. Coupon is not needed. Currency is required. So let's say that I will send euros, then some test transaction ID, shipping, then other parameters as well. And here is the item ID. So I will enter something like product name one or something like that. Again, this is just for demonstration purposes. Then we have quantity affiliation is not needed, coupon is not needed, let's say that discount is also not needed. Here I will probably keep just the tax and price. Currency is unnecessary because we have already set it right here, so I will remove this. And then let's say the price is like this, and the tax is like this. So it looks like that is enough, right? And we could click the validate event button and then test if this is working. But here's the catch. If you want to send an event with measurement protocol and you want that this event would get properly attributed to a particular traffic source, you need to include this particular event in that session, which means that we also need to send a session ID together with every event. Because if you just send this event like this, it's session source and session medium or session campaign, they will all be not set. And this means that those events will not be attributed to any traffic source. So to do that, we need to include one more parameter. And this is very important. It must be a number parameter, not string parameter, but number parameter. And here we have to enter session underscore ID. And here we have to enter the actual ID of the existing session. And that can be achieved also by reading cookies of the visitor. Again, there are other methods, but this one is probably the easiest to show in this video. So here, in the demo website, we used this particular GA cookie, but in this cookie, which is GA and then your measurement ID, it contains this particular number right here. In your case, the number will be different, but basically it is the first large number. So if you copy this and then enter here, this event will then be attributed to that particular session. But again, I want to emphasize that here you have to use the number parameter, not string parameter, but number. And you have to see the number value label right here. If you want to test this in the debug view of Google Analytics 4, and I hope that you really do, we have to add one more parameter because by default, all usual events sent to Google Analytics 4, they are not displayed in the debug view. However, if we add an additional parameter, and here again, you have to click number and you enter debug mode and then enter one. This will tell Google Analytics that this event should also be displayed in the debug view. So let's test how this is working. First, I will go to the site and then I will refresh it. By the way, right now I have already installed and activated the Google Analytics debugger extension. I will post a link to it below the video. So once you install it, you should enable it. And basically what it does is that it will make your events that are happening in your browser on a website, they will be also displayed in the debug view right here. And as you can see, there are already several events tracked and these came from my browser. And if I click here and I go to session ID, we will even see the same ID that I entered right here. So now what we should do is we should go back to the event builder and let's test if this event is also working fine. So scroll down, click validate event, and it will tell you if the event is valid. If it is invalid, then you will see a red warning and it will return some kind of error that will give you more idea why something is not working. So in my case, the event is valid and I will click send to GA. So now 
this event will be sent with measurement protocol to Google Analytics 4. It says sent. Now let's go back to Google Analytics debug view and wait for the purchase event to appear right here. And here it is. If I click it, I will see the parameters that were tracked. We have GE session ID, we have transaction ID, we have some items. So all of this is correct right now. So if you or your developers are sending data with a measurement protocol while the visitor is browsing your site at this very moment, then this kind of setup is enough. But also keep in mind that things such as page location should also be sent because when you're sending events with measurement protocol, you basically send what you define right here. The events here will not inherit whatever is happening client side in the browser of your visitor. So if you also want to include the page URL, you need to send the page location parameter. If you want to send the page title, then you will also need to do that. So it requires some effort and you or your developers will need to be more careful. However, if the visitor's session has already ended and you want to include this event in that session, you will basically need to send that event to the past. And that can be done by including a timestamp micros parameter. This parameter accepts Unix timestamp, but in microseconds, not in milliseconds, but in microseconds. So if you're new to this, you can just Google Unix timestamp, click on the first link, and this is the timestamp of the current moment. But if you're sending this to the past, you need to make sure that your timestamp that you're using belongs to the past and is part of the session while it was actually active. It's not enough just to send the data to the past. You need to send the data to the past when that GA4 session was actually active. So here, I guess I can just go back several minutes to the past. And this is the moment where my session was still active. So I will click convert. And this is the Unix timestamp. But again, this is in seconds right here, not in microseconds. So what you will need to do is to paste the timestamp right here and then add three zeros to reach the milliseconds and then three more zeros to reach the microseconds level. In general, I try to make sure that the timestamp used right here goes after the session start and the initial page view events so that the sequence of events would be logical when you have session start, the first page view, and then after some time, let's say the purchase. Also, when it comes to sending data to the past, keep in mind that you can send data up to 72 hours to the past. If the event happened, let's say four days ago, unfortunately, you will not be able to connect this event to that particular session. So now if I sent this event, it would be sent several minutes to the past to the session when it was active in GE4. So after you're done validating your event with the event builder, keep in mind that this is just a playground. You're now playing around with different parameters and you test if that is working and if that data is accepted by Google Analytics 4. The next step is to give this request information to your developer so that he or she would implement this in the server or actually, I mean, in your CRM or your website they will need to send that particular data that you have generated right here. Of course, they will need to replace things such as client ID or you know event names, maybe event parameters with what is actually happening in your system. So what you need to do next is to tell your developer the information where and what kind of request should be sent. So here is everything that you need. You need to tell your developer that the request must be sent to this host. Then this is the URL of the post request. So it contains your API secret and your measurement ID. And then here is the payload or the content of the request. It will contain things such as event name, client ID, parameters, items, and so on. So you need to copy this. Ideally, you would need to paste this somewhere as a plain text, maybe in a notepad file, and then send it to your developer. Also, you need to tell your developer that he or she must replace the client ID with the actual client ID of the user. So a developer must implement some solution to get the client ID, for example, from eCookie, like I showed you in the beginning of the video. And also session ID is important. And if the event is sent to the past, then don't forget to include timestamp micros as well. 
And here, as you can see, the request contains the debug mode. So I used it to see my own events in the debug view. But when your developer implements this and when this goes live, the developer should remove the debug mode because otherwise all your measurement protocol events will be displayed in the debug mode and it will make the process of using debug view more complicated. So when it comes to sending data with measurement protocol to GE4, the bare minimum is the API secret, the client ID, and I mean the actual existing client ID that was already tracked by GE4, then the measurement ID, but also include session ID, because if you don't, then that event will not be included in any session and that event will not be attributed to a particular traffic source. But if you send it together with client ID and also timestamp macros, then it will be attributed to the correct session. Timestamp micros is needed if you are sending data to the past. If the session is already active and the visitor is browsing your site right now, timestamp micros is not needed. Just having session ID and client ID will be enough. And then GA4 will treat that particular event, for example, purchase, as the part of the session. And that purchase event or some other event will inherit the correct traffic source of that session. If you want to learn more about measurement protocol in GE4, then take a look at their official documentation. I have to admit that it's not that good. It's missing some details. It's missing more examples, but it is what it is. So we have to work with it at the moment. And for the end of this video, several additional tips. So if you want to see what your request will look like, if you want to send a custom event, then you can switch in the event category to custom and then just send the event name. Nothing actually will change in the structure, except of course, there will be no predefined parameters here. So you will need to list them yourself. Another thing is testing that incoming data beyond debug view, because debug view will only show you what GA4 has received right now. But if you want to see how that data is displayed later in your reports, then you first of all, you will need to wait for at least 24 hours because that's how long GA4 takes to process the data. But once you do that, then you could go, for example, to reports, then acquisition, traffic acquisition. And here you will see session default channel group. You can switch it to, let's say, source and medium. And then here you can select a particular event. For example, maybe you sent some custom event so here you could switch to custom event two or custom event one, depending on what kind of events do you have. Maybe you sent something else because these two events in my case are test events and I just came up with these events. So then you could click on them and then see to which traffic source, which source and medium were they attributed. So in this case, I have four events attributed to not set because while I was playing around with it, I did not set session ID as a number. I was using the session ID as a string parameter. And that was my mistake. But eventually in another property, I properly defined the correct parameter type. And then the custom event was attributed to other traffic sources. So keep that in mind because this is a fairly common mistake. And that is how you can send data to GA4 via measurement protocol. Remember, you have to send client ID and session ID in order to properly include the event in a session. And if you are sending the event to the past, don't forget to include the timestamp as well. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.